good morning, and uh, I'd like to welcome all of you here today with us to the English worship service here at Watana Church. Uh, it's always very nice to be here and nice to meet all of you here. The call of worship today comes from Psalm chapter 145, verses 1 to 3. I will extol you, my God, O King, and I will bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will pr praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Let us now sing in praise of God's greatness together with, him, with the hymn, Praise Ye the Lord the Almighty. Let us stand, please. Please be seated, and now we'll take a moment to pray and confess our sins before the Lord, and Ajahn Paul Smith will give us the assurance of pardon. I'm not as tall as our leader, so I have to bring it down. Huh? Let's just take these next few moments to be quiet in a very personal way before the Lord our God. Let's remember that he is the Almighty, the Holy One, sovereign of the universe, and sovereign of every heart that is willing to bow and acknowledge who he is and what he has done in the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's take a moment just to be quiet as we prepare our hearts for worship. It's 
there's anything in your heart, mind, life that you feel needs to be confessed before God, this is the moment that we take each Sunday morning. The assurance of God's pardon comes to us this morning from the Old Testament, 2 Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn away from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. Wonderful promise from the Almighty God. Let's pray together. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father this morning, as we come into your holy presence, We come only in and through the precious name of your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. We recognize, as your word instructs us, that there is no other way into your presence. But there is a way. Hallelujah. We thank you again, Lord Jesus, for all that you have done in obedience to your Father's holy and eternal will. In presenting yourself to the Father as a sacrifice for our sin, taking our place of punishment for our sin. And now in you, Lord Jesus, as we confess, you so graciously and wonderfully and mercifully forgive and pardon. Blessed be your holy name. I pray for each one who is already here this morning and others who are on their way, that you by your Spirit will touch each of our hearts. That we may sense your presence, your mercy, your love, your grace to us, not only collectively, but also individually. We remember the Sunday School as it's in session right now. We ask, Lord, that you, by your Spirit, will be with each student and with each teacher present in each class as they learn of you. Bless them, we pray. We thank you for our pastor and for the pastoral team, for each elder, for each person, Lord, who is involved in the work here at Watana Church. We commit them lovingly to you this morning and pray in Jesus' name that you, by your Spirit, would be blessing them, encouraging them ministering to their hearts as you, by your Spirit, minister through them to your people. We again want to remember any who are unwell at this time, any who may be going through a time of difficulty, 
of darkness, of confusion, whatever, Lord, their situation. We cry to you again this morning that in mercy you would draw near to them by your Spirit. May they sense your love, your mercy, and your grace to them individually, whether they're at home, whether they're in hospital, wherever they may be. Again, Lord, we want to remember those who are sharing your message of love, of grace, of forgiveness, of reconciliation with those among whom they work or live or socialize. I pray, Lord, that their witness, their word, may bear fruit in lives. As so many today are facing difficulties, problems, tensions, uncertainties in their lives. May they come, Lord, to know you, whom to know is life eternal. And so bless each and every one throughout Thailand today who is sharing your gospel, the good news of your love and mercy. Now let's take a moment to share together in repeating the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Forever. Amen. You can say amen or amen. It means the same. Praise God. Before we turn to the back of our bulletin, let's just take a moment to greet those who are near us in the pews or wherever. I'm going to why everybody as a very convenient way of greeting everyone. <coughs> so we recognize uh, our presence this morning. I don't know if the weather is preventing some people coming, but uh, we trust that uh, others will be joining us soon. Now let's turn to the back of the bulletin. This is a moment when we can all share together in the ministry here at Watana Church. We do not want it to be just a one-way exercise as we come to worship God. We want to share together. There are two prayer requests this morning. And for those of, of you who are here for the first time, there should be a slip of paper in your bulletins with the word prayer and praise along the top. The purpose for this is for anyone who has a prayer request or a praise item to record. All we ask is that you write clearly so we can read what you want to share with us so we can join you in whatever prayer requests and praise items that you may have. The two prayer requests in our bulletin today are our brother uh, Asif Arthur, we had this last week, and again we're repeating, uh, for prayer for his little daughter. She is unwell, and we trust that as we pray, God will provide not only healing for her little body, but for the financing to help uh, the medication that she may need. And take this moment to remind us that there are needs among us. If anybody would like to share 
in people's financial needs. The church does not have a policy uh, of meeting all financial needs. That's virtually impossible. But we do encourage brothers and sisters in Christ, if you want to share with anyone's need, there are envelopes that you can record uh, whatever you feel is necessary. And then those envelopes will go to the office and those who have needs can make their way to the office and ask if any uh, provision has been made to help them. Sometimes we know names. If you know the name, you can write the name on the envelope. If you don't know the names, you can just say to help those in need or something appropriate. Also, let's pray for Kunnitya Supiyanya. She's in the States, but recently she's had a, quite a heavy stroke and is in hospital, and uh, she needs prayer. So wherever you are in the world, if you know of anyone that needs prayer, record it. Your church, wherever they, that church may be, your family, your loved one, your friends, whoever are in need of prayer, please record and we can pray. Because God by his spirit is everywhere in the world and he will answer the prayers and the cries of his people. Let's praise God also for his mercy for his grace to us day by day. Let's pray together. <clears throat> Our loving Heavenly Father, we bring these two specific needs to you. We do ask, Lord, for your touch upon these bodies, one here in Bangkok, one in the United States. There are other needs too, Lord, we know, and we commit them to you. And we pray in Jesus' name that you in mercy would be touching every life, every need, that they may praise you and glorify your name. We do rejoice and praise you, Father, again for your mercy and for your love to us day by day. We thank you that you're here among us by your spirit. Open our spiritual ears and understanding, I pray, that we may hear your voice and respond to you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. scripture that comes to us today is from John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. John chapter 3 verses 1 to 8. Jesus teaches Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, who was a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher from, who has come from God, for no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they are born again. How can someone be born again when they are old? Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter a second time into their mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they are born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. Next will be the sermon. Jesus meets three needy people, preached to us by it and Paul Smith. It's a great honor for me again this morning to share with you from the Word of God. And the topic that I feel the Lord wants me to share with you this morning is Jesus meets three 
needy people. And these three needy people represent human society. And that's part of us this morning. There should have been three readings, but we don't have the time. We're locked into one hour. So I have to keep my eye on the clock so we don't overstep our uh, time slot. I know of no one who took more care of people than Jesus. I know of no one who took more loving, effective care of people than Jesus. All people have needs. Each of us here this morning have needs. As people vary or are different, so are their needs. We often look at masses of people. We see all the traffic. We see all the people milling around. Jesus saw the masses too, and he had compassion for them. But in every crowd, Jesus could see the individual. and their need. He took care of every type of human need. All of us here this morning, whether we are willing to admit it or not, have needs. There were very, three very different people who came to see Jesus. And this is all recorded in the book of John, the fourth book in the New Testament. The intellectual religious man, as we've just read together, is in John chapter 3. The moral, spiritual woman is in chapter 4. And the natural physical need is in chapter 5. As we don't have time to read from chapter 4 and chapter 5 this morning, you may want to jot that down and then re go uh, this week. You may want to turn into the scriptures to read the background and the event in more detail. Jesus met each need, although those needs were very, very different. And in that confidence, I can share with you this morning, Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, can meet your need, whatever your need may be. The only requirement is that you come to him sincerely, by faith, in prayer. Need number one, the intellectual religious master, Nicodemus, came to Jesus. Nicodemus, as far as we know, was a very good man. He was the religious leader of his day in Israel. He was one of the most respected men in the country, a man of honor, a man of learning. He was a leader, one of the leaders in the government, but he had a need. He came to Jesus with an observation and with a question. His observation was, you must have come from God. Why? 
because no man can do the miracles and the wonders that you are doing. What was the question? There's a double question in his mind which is not stated in the Bible, but it's in the background. Question number one, are you the Messiah? We've been waiting for the Messiah for 2,000 years. And I believe deep down in my heart, you are the Messiah. But he didn't, Jesus didn't allow him to state it. And the second question in Nicodemus' mind is this. Have you come to deliver us from the power of Rome? You see, in the Old Testament, there are two streams of prophecy related to Jesus. One is related to the suffering Messiah, and one is related to the kingly Messiah. And at that time, in the time of Jesus in Israel, there was an expectation among many people, from the top to the bottom, if I may say that, socially, I can sense maybe this is the time the Messiah will come. And Nicodemus, being one of the leaders, was very aware of this vibe in society. And the woman in chapter 4 said almost the very same thing. We know that Messiah is coming, but we'll come to that in a minute. Nicodemus's question was political. Jesus knew the question that was vibrating in his mind. But Jesus jumped in. He wasn't interested in talking politics. Jesus went straight to the spiritual kingdom of God. Jesus exposed his spiritual need. And he awakened him to the reality. Yes, I am the Messiah, as Jesus confessed to the woman in chapter 4. But I haven't come to deliver Israel from the power of Rome. I've come to deliver everyone from the power of sin. Brothers and sisters, that's much, much more important. Nicodemus was concerned about the earthly kingdom of Israel. That's why he came to Jesus. But Jesus exposed and awakened him to the real need of his life. Jesus presents then a very basic and simple outline of the great gospel message. Nicodemus, you're a great man. You're an educated man. But you need to be born again of the Spirit of God. Being religious is as good. Being moral is good. Being educated is good. Being a good man or a good woman is good. But I have news for you this morning. You need, we need, to be born again of the Spirit of God. And thereby, we can become a child of God and enter in, not to his political kingdom, but into his eternal spiritual kingdom. Hallelujah. Being born of the Holy Spirit means I enter into a personal relationship 
with the holy and with the eternal God of heaven. By personal faith in the person and in the work of the Lord Jesus Christ and no one else. For as Peter preached in the early days of the church, there is no other name under heaven whereby we must be saved. Saved from what? The power and the penalty of sin, which is eternal death. Being born from heaven by the Holy Spirit means I enter into the kingdom of God and receive as a free gift from God eternal life. My question to you this morning, has Jesus met this need in your life? Need number two comes from an ordinary immoral woman. And the reading is in chapter 4, most of the chapter. The Samaritan woman was an ordinary but an immoral woman. She was living with husband number 5. And that's why she came to the well at midday. All the nice women were at home because it was too hot. And she came to the well at midday. She had a need, a spiritual need. She used religion to try to cover up her need. If you read the story, as Jesus on his journey stopped at this well in Samaria. And he asked her for a drink of water. You are, a Samaritan. you are a Jew and I'm a Samaritan and you're asking me for a drink? Yes, said Jesus. But if you knew who I am and the gift that I can give to you, you would ask of me and I would give you living water. Wow, what's that? But like Nicodemus, she kept thinking on the natural. Surely I can't be born again from my mother's womb. No, Nicodemus, that's not necessary. But you can be born again by the Spirit. Sir, you don't have anything to dig the water out, drink the, draw the water out from the well. And this well is deep. It was Jacob's old well. It's been here a long time. Where are you going to get this water from? And as Jesus shared in John chapter 7, all who come to me, I will give to them living water. What does he mean? Spiritual water, spiritual life. Firstly, Jesus got her attention. Secondly, he awakened her interest. Thirdly, he exposed her sin. Go and call your husband, Jesus said. Well, sir, I have no husband. That's right, said Jesus. You're on husband number five. Huh? You know me? Remember, Jesus knows the heart 
of every one of us here this morning. Jesus doesn't need an x-ray, either physical or spiritual. Jesus knows your heart this morning. He knows exactly where you are in your relationship with other people. He knows exactly where you are in your relationship with the Holy God, with his Father, and with himself. So don't try to hide behind religion or culture or whatever you may think you can hide. You cannot hide from God. As with Nicodemus, she was basically concerned with natural things, but Jesus focused on her spiritual need. And at the end of the story we read, she left her water pot at the well, she went into the town, back into the town, and she told everybody, I've met someone who is amazing. And before the end of the day, hundreds of people from that area were trusting in the Lord Jesus through this woman's testimony. Item number three, uh, need number three. Here we meet a helpless physical man at Bethsaida. He was helpless and lonely for 38 years a victim of disease. No home, no family, alone in the crowd. Anyone here this morning like that? This man knew his need. He didn't try to pretend, he didn't try to cover. Jesus asked him a very interesting question. Do you want to be healed? It was a very obvious question. And the man's answer was very interesting because it wasn't a simple yes. He was trying to give a self-pitying reason for his situation. Again, that's not necessary. Jesus' heart is full of mercy, full of love, and full of compassion. And he wants to meet your need. You don't need to make any self-pitying excuses. Apart from Jesus, there is no one to help us with our spiritual need. Superstition won't help. Religion won't help. Money, power, position, status won't help. In fact, very often they're the biggest hindrance. You and I need the compassion, the mercy, and the touch of Jesus. Our time is gone. Let's pray. Loving Father, whatever our need this morning, may we be honest enough to face that need and to come to you in prayer by faith and ask you for deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. The offertory. This morning is from Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 to 21. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. As the offering bag is passed along, we will sing together the hymn, Here, O my Lord, I see thee face to face.
Let's just take one quick moment to be quiet as we prepare our hearts now to partake in the communion. Remember, we're remembering the broken body and the outpoured life's blood of our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. From Luke chapter 22, <clears throat> Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it. And he gave to them, saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. As we take the bread, hold, and we'll all partake together. Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. Let's partake. Likewise, also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament or the new agreement in my blood, which is shed for you.
then as you take the cup, hold, and we'll all partake together. Jesus took the cup and said, drink ye all of it. Let's stand together and drink the cup together. Let's all stand and sing, uh, let's all sing together the doxology. Father, again we thank you for your mercy and for your grace so wonderfully expressed and revealed in Jesus, your beloved Son, our Savior. Lord Jesus, again we thank you for all that you have done for us in giving of yourself to the utmost in sacrifice to your Father on our behalf. Now we can be restored and reconciled to a holy God. Now we can be forgiven. Now every need that we may have can be met in him. And we say thank you again this morning, gracious Lord. Now may the peace and the blessing of God the Father, the grace of God the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the fellowship, the encouragement of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us in these coming days. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. As you go into this coming week, whatever need you may have had when you came to our fellowship this morning, 
You don't need to hold on to that need. You don't need to hide behind anything to make out you have no need. Just come to Jesus and ask him, I have this need. Please touch me. The Lord bless you. In Jesus' name, amen.